yes so in the last class we started with a new chapter that is income from salary under income from salary first we discussed about chargeability of salary so whenever we are discussing about salary we should consider the salary for the previous year whether it is uh, paid by the employer or whether it is due from the employer that we have to see then after that uh, there are certain rules governing the salary uh, under that you know salary given to the mla mp is not considered as salary similarly fees uh, received by the director is also not considered as salary then there are various points are there under uh, rules regarding the salary income after this we discussed about uh, allowances various types of allowances so what do you mean by allowances allowance means it is an amount paid by the employer to his employee in order to meet certain specific expenses incurred by him for the for discharging his duties so what do you mean by this suppose uh, you are living in a rented house then the hra allowance is given house rent allowance is given similarly if you are working underground area then underground allowance is given suppose if you are working overtime overtime allowance is given similarly there is one more concept known as monetary emolument monetary emolument means in addition to the basic whatever the amount you receive comes under monetary emolument it may be include da dearness allowance similarly bonus commission fees and any contribution by the employer to rpf that is recognized provident fund and interest thereon to the extent taxable and all the taxable allowance comes under monetary emolument so it excludes non monetary benefits so what do you mean by non monetary benefits it is on kind of perquisite perquisite generally it is non monetary in nature suppose uh, uh, employer is uh, pro employer given free gas electricity water free education facility for employees children in that case what happens it is it should not be considered under monetary emolument then allowance if you see there are various allowances we discussed da cca hra convenience allowance transport allowance traveling allowance entertainment allowance so under entertainment allowance it is very important it is given in order to enable the employee to meet the expenses incurred for entertaining the employer's customer it is first included in the salary then the deduction is given under section 16 clause 2 that means what first while calculating the income from salary we have to consider entertainment allowance after that after calculating all the uh, as per the prescribed format what is the prescribed format first basic then da then any allowances then any perquisite then any contribution made by the employer Uh, uh, to the rpf then interest there on then any uh, free facilities given to the employee that also uh, we should add it, uh, we should add back to the salary after that we have to deduct certain thing one is professional tax professional tax if it is given in the problem we have to deduct then there is uh, one more thing comes is entertainment allowance that this deduction is allowable only if uh, ssc is a government employee then uh, one more thing is about standard deduction so can you tell me what is the amount for standard deduction yes can you tell me 161850000 yes correct so now standard deduction amount is fixed that is under 16 clause 1 that is 50000 before it was 40000 similarly professional tax uh, uh, what is the maximum limit for professional tax can you tell me can anyone tell me what is the maximum limit for professional tax uh, per year 2500 2500 yes so 2500 is a maximum limit that means per month uh, you can uh, get a deduction of 200 usually professional tax is charged like 200 per month so 200 into 12 means 2400 so maximum limit is 2500 yes so that we discussed then uh, foreign allowance educational and one more these two allowances are very important from the point of view of examination that we are going to discuss education allowance see this education allowance they say it is exempt up to 100 per month per child up to three or uh, two children suppose in the problem if it is given three children is there their expenses is 300 so uh, can you tell me the amount now can you tell me the amount 300 per month three children we want a calculation for one year can you tell me can you repeat sir once yes 300 per month is the expense of child 
for education allowance so there are three child th three children so one year what is the total amount 300 into 3 into 12 what is the amount 10800 10800 so from 10800 what is the exemptable limit 100 per month per child up to two children so only for two children this allowance is given if it uh, uh, number of children is more than two then uh, allowance is not there so exemptable limit out to calculate can you tell me now 2400 100 into 2 into 12 100 into 2 200 200 into 12 yes 2400 correct so from 10,800, if you deduct 2,400, you will get remaining taxable education allowance. Similarly, hostel allowance, see this, hostel allowance is exempt up to 300 per month per child for two children. Again, these two children is important and this 300 per month is also very, very important. So that is hostel allowance. Then all other elements you have to go through this one, fixed medical allowance, tiffin allowance, daily allowance, academic allowance. Uniform allowance, helper allowance, yes. Then personal allowance is there, servant, non-practicing, overtime. That we, you have to see this. Yes. So after discussing this, we discussed about perquisite. So what do you mean by perks? Perks is any casual emolument in addition to the salary or wages. It may be in cash or in kind. Generally, perquisite means it is in kind. So, in addition, perquisites are the benefits in addition to the normal salary. Suppose the employer uh, gives you any laptop uh, for a working purpose. So, then that is a perquisite. Suppose the employer gives you a house to stay. So, that is also a perquisite. So, that is a rent-free accommodation. So, whenever there is a rent-free accommodation, the very important concept from the point of view of examination because rent-free accommodation sum comes for 8 marks. Then similarly, there is an ATC calculation, deduction under ATC, that is also very important problem, 8 marks from the point of view of examination. So that we have to see. Then uh, see this, perquisite includes value of rent-free accommodation provided by the employer, any concessional rent in re uh, respect of accommodation provided. That means sometimes uh, accommodation may not be owned by the employer. That means uh, employer is also paying the rent and uh, you will get a certain amount from the employee. Such a recovered amount we have to deduct from the rent free accommodation. So that is one more thing. Then uh, uh, we discussed about types of perquisite. Types of perquisite under that first is tax free perquisite. Under that teas or snack. See this tea or snack. Any non-alcoholic beverages or snacks provided during the working hour. It is fully exempt from tax. Similarly, food provided by the employer, exempt from tax. Then uh, recreational facility, medical facility. See this, provision of medical facility at an of, at office is exempt. Telephone and mobile phone, similarly, that is also exempt. Now, th this point is very important one. Free education facility, see this. Free education facility to the children of employee in an institution owned or maintained by the employer Provided cost of such a facility does not exceed 1000 per month per child. So, now what they are saying is up to 1000 per month there is an exemptable limit. After this, whatever the amount is there, then that is taxable. So, let us take the example now. Employee has two children. Employee has two children and expenses of education. Uh, suppose we will assume that now employee goes uh, employee's uh, child goes uh, in an institution owned by the employer and such an expense of education is 3000 3000 per month per child so now what is the exemptable uh, amount that we have to calculate before that what is the total amount we have to calculate can you tell me the total amount 3000 per month per child there is two children 76 72000 yes 3000 into 3000 into 12, yes, 36,000, 36,000 into 2, 70, 2000, right? 72. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, 72,000. Yes, from this, what is the exemptable amount? Can you tell me the exemptable amount now? 24,000. 1000 into 2, why 1000? 1000 is a maximum limit, yeah. And there is two child, per child they have given. There, there is no mentioned about uh, whether they have mentioned. Two children, three children not mentioned per child. 
so as many children goes to the institution maintained by the employer direction is available up to 1000 so 1000 into 2 2000 2000 into 12 24000 24000 right yes sir yes. so taxable amount will be 48000 48000 48000 will be the taxable yes, amount 24000 yes. yes so now after this computer and laptop see this computer and laptop if it is given in the question we will assume that it is for office purpose because why laptop is given to do the office work uh, that is work from home that is why the laptop is provided to the employee in that case it is exempt from tax now work is it exempted up to the specified limit what do you mean by specified limit so certain portion of the work visit is exempt and remaining portion is taxable see this first one fixed medical allowance fully taxable other medical allowance this is very important other medical expenditure reimbursed subject to the maximum of 15000 yes then suppose treatment given to the patient in uh, any recognized uh, hospital in india whether it is taxable any recognized hospital in india government hospital not taxable not taxable exempt from tax but if you see travel expenditure of patient and attendant for a uh, uh, treatment abroad shall be exempted if uh, gross total income before including the reimbursement of the amount of exemption foreign travel expenditure should not exceed 2 lakh so what they are saying your foreign travel expenditure amount should not exceed 2 lakh before adding the so this one reimbursement amount this also you have to see then free meals and tea and snack so very important point is under this see this free food and non alcoholic beverage provided at the working hours or student coupon or non transferable voucher to use at eating joint exempted to the extent of 50 per day so suppose you have 50 rupee uh, you have 90 rupees coupon 90 rupees coupon and uh, 300 days uh, uh, that, that facility you can avail in that case what is the exemptable amount can you tell me what is the exemptable amount 90 rupee coupon hmm? 90 rupee coupon 300 days you can use that coupon per day 90 rupees 15000 will be exempt sir 15000 50 into 50 300. into 300 yes 50 into 300 is exempt from tax remaining is taxable now we have to discuss about very important concept that is the rent free accommodation we have to see this now what do you mean by rent free accommodation first of all what do you mean by this can anyone tell me what do you mean by rent free accommodation where the accommodation is given by the employer free of cost free of cost so that is the meaning of rent free accommodation whenever we are uh, discussing about rent free accommodation very important point is about population what is the population in that particular city if it is more than 20 25 lakh if it uh, whether it is below 25 lakh uh, if it is below 10 lakh what is the rate that we have to discuss then if house is not owned by the employer in that case one more condition is there for rent free accommodation that we have to see then sometimes what happens house is owned by the employer but uh, certain uh, furniture is provided furnished accommodation whether this is possible furnished rent free accommodation yes, sir. Yes. so in yes, that sir. that time you should add the value of furniture hmm yes that time you have to add cost of furniture cost of furniture means 10% you have to take of the cost of furniture if furniture is also hired by the employer in that case what we have then to the, do then the hired price yes then the hired by the price we have to add yes then hired price we have to add suppose certain rent is recovered from employee or rent is paid by the employee such amount we have to deduct from rent free accommodation then we will get a taxable rent free accommodation so now we will see this valuation of rent free unfurnished accommodation rule 3 clause 1 accommodation may be house accommodation means uh, ssc or employee can stay in house flat farm house or in hotel given by the employer 
for the valuation of rent free unfurnished accommodation employees are divided into two so now you know main two types of employee one is government employee second one is non government employee so now we will discuss about government employee so nature of perquisite in the case of state or central government employee value of perquisite is the license fee determined by the government reduced by the rent recovered from the employee so what is a license fee so it is a predetermined fee so that we have to consider and not the market value of the house so suppose market value of the house is given in the question that we should ignore and we have to consider this license fee and similarly if any rent is paid by the uh, employee that also we have to deduct from such license fee that is the treatment for government employee but from the point of view of examination we want non government employee rules nature of perquisite to non government employee so under that first one first case comes is accommodation owned by the employer first case is accommodation owned by the employer so what do you mean by accommodation owned by the employer can you tell me whether my voice is audible whether my voice is audible now can you tell me can you hear me now can yes sir yes yes so we were talking about non current breaking good evening sir uh, yes good evening can you see the screen now the screen is visible but your voice, uh, the video is lagging and the voice is breaking sir is it everyone is facing the same problem yes sir yes sir so but network is good here so, so now let us see let us see now uh, we were discussing about uh, non government employee under that accommodation owned by the employer so now value of the perquisite will be so first one in the cities having population exceeding 25 lakh as per census 2001 census suppose population of the city is more than 25 lakh 15% of the salary less rent actually paid by the employee so this is the first one now second case comes is in the cities having the population exceeding 10 lakh but not exceeding 25 lakh as per 2001 census in that case what is the rate 10% of the salary 10% of the salary less rent actually paid by the employee in all other places that means less than 10 lakh population 7.5% of the salary less rent actually paid by the employee so have you understood the rules now for rent free accommodation very important rules yes sir yes can you tell me the rules now once again if population is more than 25 lakh yes sir yes if population is more than 25 lakh then 15% of salary mm. if it is between 10 lakhs and 25 lakhs then mm. it is 10% of salary yes. less than 10 lakhs 7.5% of the salary yes correct so reduced by any amount received by the employer yes correct correct so now this is what we have to do when there is a non government employee and house is owned by the employer so now we have understood about one case then one more thing accommodation is taken on lease by the employer that means now owner of the house is not the employer he has taken it from someone else in that case rent paid by the employer or 15% of the salary whichever is lower so this is a rule rent paid by the employer or 15% of the salary whichever is lower less rent recovered from the employee so this is about case number 2 suppose accommodation in hotel that is case number 3 in that case 24% of the salary paid or payable or actual charges paid or payable whichever is low, lower that means first you have to calculate 24% of the salary or else actual charges whatever incurred during that hotel 
in uh, whatever the expenses incurred in that hotel whichever is lower less amount paid or payable by the employee so this is for accommodation in hotel so now in rent free accommodation there are three cases one is non government employee house is owned by the employer second one is non government employee house is not owned by the employer third one is non government employee and accommodation is hotel in that case there are certain rules and about government employee we have already discussed about a license fee yes so now you see accommodation provided in a hotel is not taxable in the case period of accommodation provided is less than 15 days or provided at time of transfer of employee from one place to another that means if uh, uh, ssc or employee stays uh, for less than 15 days then this condition uh, this is not taxable or else at the time of transfer if hotel uh, is given uh, uh, for the uh, residential purpose uh, for staying purpose in that case also it is not taxable salary for the purpose for valuation of rent free accommodation we have to see so what do you mean by salary salary means basic plus da da when you should consider only if it enters the retirement benefit all taxable allowance that you have to consider if there is any bonus or commission that also you have to consider any other monetary payment that also comes including earned leave by the employee while in service but what and all is excluded from rfa calculation for the purpose of, of determining the salary what and all excluded that we have to see one is employer's contribution to pf pf means provident fund or recognized provident fund that we should not consider ex exempted allowance suppose uh, some allowance is given for uh, performing official duties and you know whenever uh, allowances is given for uh, performing the official duties it is exempt from a tax such allowance you should not consider perquisite under section 17 clause 2 and perquisite under section 17 clause 2 clause 3 or its provision you should not consider so perquisite under 17 clause 2 is nothing but uh, uh, if there is any tax free uh, perquisite that you should not consider so these are the things regarding rent free accommodation then under rent free accommodation then one more case comes is valuation of rent free furnished accommodation so now first case is unfurnished rent free accommodation now second main case is furnished rent free accommodation in that case what happens employee may be provided furniture at free along with accommodation and so provided furniture may be owned either furniture may be owned by the employer or it is hired and given by the employer in that case valuation of rent free furnished accommodation will be as follow first uh, first thing is same see this first thing is same valuation of unfurnished accommodation as per the rule 15% 10% 7.5% 7 depending upon the population we have to calculate and to that answer you have to add value of furniture provided so under value of furniture provided there are two cases if it is owned by the employer in that case you have to take 10% per annum on the original cost of such furniture so let us take uh, the example 90000 is a value of furniture and it is owned by the employer in that case what is the amount very simple what is the amount now can you tell me 90% is a cost of furniture and it is owned by the employer given to the employee Yes. Anvit, Dayanand, Narasimha, Anuj, Anumanta. Yes, sir. Yes. Can you tell me if cost of furniture is ninety thousand, then it is given to employee and furniture is owned by the employer. So, what is the cost of furniture we have to add to rent-free accommodation? Sir, how much? Nine thousand. Nine thousand. Yes, ninety thousand into ten percent. Ninety thousand into ten percent. That is nine thousand. We have to add to RF. If it is hired from third party, then actual hire charges you have to add. Suppose both is given. In that case, what you are going to do? Cost of furniture is also given. Hire charges is also given. In that case. 
then rent how much we have to how much we are paying that we should add sir higher uh, higher charges we have to add this we have to pay yes higher charges we have to add and cost of furniture then we should not pay so that is one more thing less if any charges paid or payable by the employee that you have to deduct finally you will get valuation of rent free furnished accommodation furniture includes either it may be television set radios refrigerators other household appliances air conditioning plant or equipment yes so these are the rules regarding rent free accommodation and there are various cases involved in rent free accommodation so i hope now you understood all the rules regarding rfa any doubt in the rules you have to ask me now any doubt no sir no anmit have you understood dayanand anuj anumanta understood sir yes so now you see after discussing the rules we have to solve few problems that is now let us discuss problem number 1 Mr Manoj an employee of government of Karnataka draws 80000 per month as basic pay so salary drawn by SSE is given government has provided him rent free unfurnished flat whose market rent is 21600 per month though as per the government rules license fees of the flat is 2500 per month determine the value of requisite in respect of rent free flat for the assessment year 2020 21 can you tell me rfa value in this case 8000 how much 20 30000 30000 yes in this case rfa value is 30000 why because here mr manoj is a government employee whenever government employee is given rule is license fee and rent recovered from the employee is not given in the question so directly license fee per month into 12 we have to do so as mr manoj is a government employee valuation of the perquisite in the respect of rent free flat in on the basis of license fee of the flat as per the government rule market rental value of the flat should not be taken so here what is the market rental value 21600 this information we should not take and value of the perquisite in respect of rfa rent free accommodation that is 2500 into 12 that is 30000 so now this is very very clear so this is just a example this type of problem is not asked in the examination just for understanding so we discussed one problem so now let us see problem number 2 that is from the following particular compute the perquisite value of rent free accommodation So now you see there is basic they say twenty thousand D A dearness allowance is at fifty percent of the basic. So fifty percent of the basic means can you say tell me the D A now? Ten thousand. Ten thousand. Ten thousand is a D A. So now out of that ten thousand half is considered for retirement benefit. So ten thousand divided by two. Five thousand is considered for retirement benefit. Now it is very clear. So this D A and basic usually it is per month. Basic means it is per month he is drawing the salary of twenty thousand. Bonus, bonus they say one month of basic that is nothing but bonus is twenty thousand because basic is twenty thousand that is why bonus is also twenty thousand. D P D R N S P A five thousand per month and it enters the retirement benefit. so you have to consider this dp information also commission commission they have given as a fixed percentage of turnover that fixed percentage is 2% turnover is 30 lakh so that also you have to consider he provided rent free house in delhi and you know delhi is a metro city and population of course more than 25 lakh even though it is not given in the problem we have assumed that uh, population is more than 25 lakh so whenever calculating uh, rent free accommodation we have to take 15% of the salary cost of furniture is given 75000 and the company pays 700 per month as a higher charges so here both the information is given but we have to take higher charges information since furniture is not owned by the company or not owned by the employer so 7000 700 into 12 we have to add to rent free accommodation so now 
solution part. So this type of problem comes for 8 mark. So first thing before calculating rent free accommodation we want to know what do you mean by salary. So for RFA purpose can you tell me what is salary? Yes, can you tell me what do you mean by salary? Basic plus DA forming part of retirement. Yes. Then bonus, commission. Mm. Yes. Then commission of turnover, then DP, that is it. That's all we have to add. You'll yes. get uh, total for the year. Yes. Then we have to multiply into 15%. Mm. Correct. So now, allowance, if allowances are given, that also we have to consider. Because RFA includes uh, taxable allowances also. But in this question, whether allowance is given or not given. So it doesn't matter. And all other information we have to consider. So now first thing we have to do here working note. Working note calculation of salary. Calculation of salary for RFA. That we have to find out first. So basic salary. Basic is 20,000. That is per month, but uh, RFA means we want for one year. So 20,000 into 12, we have to do for one year. Our basic is 2,40,000. Now DA, DA they say 50% of basic. So 20,000 into 50% if you do, you will get DA as 10,000. So that is 10,000 per month. Now we want it for 12 months. So 10,000 into 12, that is 1,20,000. But uh, one more condition is given here. Out of that 1,20,000, only half is considered for retirement benefit. That is why divided by 2, if you do, you will get DA as 60,000. After that bonus, bonus they say 1 month of basic, so 1 month of basic is 20,000, so bonus is also 20,000. DP, they said it enters the retirement benefit. That is why we have to consider this information. 5,000 into 12 DP, dearness pay, that is 60,000. Commission directly 2% and 30 lakh turnover is given. So just calculate the commission. 30 lakh into 2%. Commission will be 60,000. So total salary we want add all these things. Basic, DA, bonus, DP, commission. You will get salary as 4 lakh 40,000. Now we calculated the salary. So now one more thing. If it doesn't enter the retirement benefit. So suppose in the problem they have just mentioned DA. Then uh, should we consider DA? Can you tell me, if only DA is given in the problem, they have not mentioned about whether it enters the retirement benefit or not in that case. Yes, Dayanand, Anvit, Anuj, Anumanta. Yes, tell me. See this rule, rent free accommodation, DA you should consider only if it is considered for retirement benefit. That means if sir, only... Can you repeat your question sir? Yes. See, if in the question, if they have given dearness allowance, only they have mentioned about dearness allowance, then should we take that dearness allowance for RFA calculation? No, we have to assume if it is forming part or not forming part. No, no. If they have not given, then uh, it is not considered for retirement benefit. That is the assumption. Yes, correct. If they have not mentioned, then we should not take DA. That is the rule. E only if they mention that it enters the retirement benefit, then only we have to consider DA for uh, RFA calculation. In this question, they have said... It enters the retirement benefit. See this. Half is rent enters the retirement benefit. That is why only half of the amount we have considered. Half of the amount. See this. One lakh twenty. We have not considered one lakh twenty. Half sixty thousand. So total salary we got now four lakh forty. Next step is computation of a taxable value of rent free accommodation. Particular and amount column you have to do. So first thing, 15% of the salary. Why 15% of the salary? Because accommodation is situated in, located in Delhi. And Delhi, you know, population is more than 25 lakh. That is why, what is the rule? If it is more than 25 lakh, 15% of the salary. That is why we have taken 15% of the salary. 4,40,000 into 15%. So that is answer is 66,000.
add higher charges of furniture cost of furniture and higher charges is given so we have to consider higher charges only so that is 700 into 12 700 into 12 if you do you will get higher charges of furniture 8400 so now total amount 66000 plus 8400 74400 minus from this you have to deduct rent paid by the employee but in this question whether rent paid by the employee is given not mentioned that is why rent paid by the employee is nil if it is given you have to deduct from the total then final taxable value of rfa that is the taxable value of rent free accommodation is 74400 so this is how you are going to solve the problem for 8 mark so this type of problem comes for exam yes any doubt regarding this problem you can tell me now